Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. I'm up here today in up Cold Creek Canyon doing a video um, about a kiln. Um, this is a really large size one, uh, one of the second largest I've wired. Um, this is a 6,000 watts, so 6 kW. Uh, basically, it's 240 volt rated. Um, it's got a big cubic volume in there. You put a pretty nice pot. I'll show, have it come on the back side here. I'll show you the element here. This guy right here has got one, two, three, four, five elements. And so these two are in series looping until it goes back. These two are in series looping and going back. And then these two. And then this black and white is dedicated to itself at the bottom. So before I went ahead and wired anything up, I made sure that the elements were not shorted. Nothing melted, I could tell. And I checked my continuity. Uh, this is your probe right here, which is going to be your temperature setting. And into this box, they called us out originally because the contactor burnt out. This is an old school mercury contactor. Uh, it's probably, and it might be older than me. I was born in the 70s, so this might be in the 60s. Um, it's 30 amp rated, 240 volt. The coil is very important to know that it's 240 volt rated because if you get a 120, 12, or 24 volt, you're going to smoke that right in front of you. So that is 240 volt rated. There is no transformer to step down the juice. Um, right here we simply have an on off switch which meets code that it breaks both poles at the same time. So what's going to happen here is that these guys have just the breaker set up right here. Square D home line. 30 amp rated breaker. 30 amp rated plug. It's a three prong right here. Okay, so it's going to have that L shape, which is your old school dryer plug with no ground. And then you're going to turn that on. Well, before I turn it on, we rewired this uh, because it melted right off the leg. And when I got here, it was already a mess, so I had to trace through everything. It took about an hour to figure out how this thing was running. But we traced through. We put some new clips on here, some uh, forks, crimped those down, taped them up, made sure we traced our wires. We know that we're 240 here. We got our line coming in here to the contactor, our load coming out. Our coil satisfies and pushes down. So this is truly the switch breaking the contacts at the same time, which Article 2, 422 and the appliance code part of the National Electric Code talks about breaking both poles at once uh, when you're disconnecting or when a thermostat's working, whatever. So really what's happening is just juice is coming in here waiting to be used for the bridge to shut, power goes down through the switch on two legs, turns on and off. Then that goes through, one of the legs goes through the thermostat and waiting in order for the T-stat to shut and then it connects and shuts this coil. Now you, the, the snap switch right here is rated at 8 amps, which is fine because all we're killing is a thermostat and a coil and I guarantee you those are both rated at less than a quarter amp. And then right up in here on this this uh, device itself, it says 230, 240 volt rated or 208 on the coil. It talks about that the contactor is rated at 30 amps. It has a model number, serial number. It's made by Square D, so I know that's not some off stupid brand I would never put in somewhere. Uh, this contactor, I think they got for 20, 30 bucks. Um, I'm not sure. Normally I'll put in a Siemens if I bring it, and it might be closer to 50 bucks. And if it takes a trip on my truck, it depends on it may be 60 bucks. But uh, if you're going to supply these parts and expect me to show up, make sure you get these parts right. If you don't and I show up, uh, you're going to owe me about 30 minutes of time plus a trip charge. So this is your responsibility if you're going to order parts. Otherwise, sometimes what we have to do is go out, diagnose it, go get the parts and come back. Um, either way, this guy was really sharp. He knew what he was doing. He knew what to order. He, he matched it up. He brought it in and brought it back. He took care of that for me. Um, so anyways, I'm going to show you how this was running. Hit our breaker. Here's our disconnect within sight coming into here. Um, oh, and we also drilled out just this unit with a unit bit. Uh, he had a half inch kale plug right here, too small. Uh, we put in a three quarter right there just to get all these wires in so nothing shorts out. So I'm going to turn on the switch, count three, four seconds, and this will close. Boom. Did you see that? Here's your break. This is going to be your weakest link, and I'm assuming once or twice. 
uh, one or one to every one time to every one to two years, you're gonna have to replace this. And three seconds, boom. So if this had failed and we didn't need a thermostat, we could have rewired this that these actually went straight to the coil and we just turned it on and off ourselves. But the thermostat is what's telling it to shut on and off. Now, if that goes bad, that might be an expensive part, and I'm not sure where to go on that. And I, I don't even know the brand yet on this. Um, it's yeah. AIM. So I guess it's new to me in that name. But there's a model number, sealer number. Um, knowing that it's UL listed, knowing that it was something not manufactured or somebody's garage is great. So anyways, um, the other thing is that when you turn in this thing on, you know, make sure you don't have anything fall because these are hot. Make sure nothing grounds out because I grounded this box already. So we're going to put an amp probe. Let's see how this guy's running. Boom. This element's only drawn 5.5 amps. And before he heads home, he doubles to 10 to 12 amps almost. And if I go all the way down here, gently not shorten stuff out. Boom, 28.5 amps. And because it's single phase, no neutral, it's a balanced load. The other side will be about 28 amps as well. So I'm roughly about a 6,000 watt unit. And I totally had to rewire this just from frying. And I'll come in here and right now outside, it's got to be about, geez, 30, 28 degrees. It's snowing already. But yeah, we're firing up. I want to heat this, put it under a little bit of stress. Uh, it's a bit like a dryer at home. If you have the door open, the heater might not work as well because it's really designed with it shut. Uh, stones look pretty good. Little cracks here and there. But yeah. So anyways, that's how you rewire a kiln. Uh, normally I'm used to wor working on these guys. So um, I've wired a bunch of these at people's houses. Anywhere from 20 to 50 amps. I got a guy that wants me to wire one uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, 80 amps so he's gonna need a 80 amp breaker well I think it's a 90 amp breaker and wiring at 80 amps so on that um, this we used a 10 gauge cord something on that amount you're probably gonna be running number four if you're gonna be 125 percent of that load because you're running a continuous duty above three hours which the codes talks about uh, my guess is you're gonna be maybe then uh, probably number three but number two is more common on the truck and um, so anyways, that's it guys. Yeah, so let us know if we can help you out. We do these odd in jobs for people and uh, we'll, we'll travel. Thanks.